Hey guys, Thunder E here and we are back with another professional camera review of the Huawei P30 Pro. And I'm sorry it's taking this long to do this video. Just blame me, not Marion here. Uh, <laughs> but uh, again, this is Mr. Marion Sell, who I've done uh, these kind of videos with for about a year or so. Yeah, a little yeah. longer. Yeah, a little yeah, longer. We started with the Galaxy S9, we did the P20 Pro, which you really liked last year. Yes. So were you excited to do the P30 Pro this year? Yes, I was just really curious what they, what they brought to the new phone, because the, the last one was, was a quite good product. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Marion did the usual thing, he took it out into the water. I know he went, <laughs> he went kite sailing and uh, took a bunch of pictures and we're gonna check out what uh, you thought of the P30 Pro and uh, the photos he took. Let's do it. All right. Here we go, we're starting this time with a portrait mode. So um, usually maybe you know, remember I have a little mixed relationship with the portrait mode and most of the times on I'm not a big fan of this mode, but here on this phone for the first time it felt like it's pretty well achieved actually. So the, the phone has four lenses on the back side. There's a wide angle, a regular lens and the tele lens, which is periscopic. And there is a Z lens, that is the lens that's dedicated to calculating the depth of the portrait mode shots. So in this particular case, um, you see the image of my friend Tabish. Um, he's obviously sharp and the lines of his kite are getting more and more and more unsharp towards the horizon, which is really nice. As usual, foreground, pretty sharp, but that's okay. Um, the, the corners around him are, for the first time actually, uh, I think are really uh, blending into the background in a nice manner. So the, uh, there are a few digital artifacts, but that seems to be acceptable. Generally, uh, it's a pretty well achieved portrait mode. Same here with my friend Prashemek, uh, who is obviously super stoked. <laughs> look how the, the unsharpness of the background kind of actually nicely stops at shoulder and neck and hat. It's pretty good. Another one of my friend Prashemek and our usual go-to model. And it's so much fun. Like, the portrait mode really does some cool things. Um, I, for the first time, think that is, it's fun to play with this mode. And here we are comparing a RAW file to a JPEG in a backlit environment. And I remember in particular how the iPhone X as well as the Samsung did a really good job at backlit environments. I think the iPhone was actually my favorite. And the, the, Huawei, um, the Huawei P20 had, when I first used it, had some very screaming candy-like color environments and everything tried to look super happy. But uh, it seemed like Huawei dimmed of tamed, tamed their color spectrum or tamed their color environment down a lot. So the JPEGs come in pretty color accurate, which is of course not a bad thing. But I guess if you would compare this now to a shot with the iPhone or the Samsung, you might initially be a little bit underwhelmed by the file you get out of the Huawei. Um, but I wanted to show you one thing here that is because it's backlit and the Huawei does not really try to like, uh, get too much HDR going on in the, back, in, in, the, in the dark, for example. I wanted to show you what happens if I try in the JPEG to push the shadows and there is not a lot left. So it's definitely a good idea to shoot raw as well as maybe you recognize how, how sharpened this image looks now in JPEG. Comparing to raw, um, this looks like a pretty neat file and I can start pushing the shadows and you get a lot of texture in the dark wetsuit of Tabish. So um, it's, it's pretty useful in this particular environment, backlit environment to shoot raw. But I'm going to go into um, um, a tricky part of the raw file in just a minute. Maybe you see how this file looks a little bit green compared to the JPEG, which looks much more neutral. Here we go. I did some action shots with uh, Huawei with a long lens, uh, which which is great because so they do something very clever with with this phone. There's a periscopic lens inside the housing, which means that there is basically what you see when you look at the back of the phone is a, you see a mirror, and the lens is sitting inside the housing with optical elements, and it's being reflected through the mirror. So basically, that gives you a longer optical element hidden under the surface of the phone, which is a very clever way of dealing with keeping the phone flat on the one hand, but having a great lens on the other hand. So, but um, the reason why I want to show you these photos, because I did a series of raw action photos in the ocean, and the, the long lens 
has a very hard time to getting the focus right. Um, it is when, when you click on the screen and you tell it what to focus on, then, then it works, but it's, it's very slow. As well as the, the phone requests you to hold the phone stable after a long lens shot has been taken, just to, to do some sharpening and some, some soft bird things are happening there. I don't know exactly what it is, to be honest. So I've got this shot here, which is accidentally in focus, and it's, it's awesome because you, you even see Prashemek's face, and it's not, it's not screaming. You can basically use this shot and put curves on it and do, do anything you want to it. Um, but uh, all the other shots here are basically out of focus. And the Huawei, the long lens, has a tendency to attempt to focus into the sky when there's an obvious subject in the foreground. So maybe that's a software thing they can ameliorate. Okay, and because I had a hard time getting the focus right at action shots with a long lens, I switched to the normal photo mode, which allows me to do burst shots. So here you go. This is pretty amazing. The, the burst is really, really cool. And you, you just hold the camera at your, at your body, hit the button, and every photo is a pretty high resolution, great file. So this made me very happy, and this made my friend, of course, very happy. He was like having one of the waves of his life. Like, look at this. So the burst mode is really cool and fun. Just get the focus right. So the regular lens of the Huawei shoots 40 megapixel files if you want, if you want that. And I wanted to show you quickly one, one big thing about uh, shooting with small sensors. So the center is in focus and it's actually impressively sharp. You get lots of sun grains. Every little sun grain has its own details. That's amazing. But uh, you lose the focus towards the edges of the frame and uh, you have a really, really drastic fall off of sharpness. And, um, and this is an environment where it's very obvious that you are operating a very strong sensor that is that is very small. Like a point-and-shoot camera would make a huge difference on this one. It would, it would be much, much sharper towards the edges. Um, but well, on the other hand, uh, you, maybe when you're in a sandstorm at the beach, you don't want to carry a nice point-and-shoot camera around with you, so therefore, I'm glad that I had a Huawei on me. <laughs> and finally, and probably very important, is the night mode, because it's, uh, it's quite impressive what you can do with this camera. Um, Samsung and Google are also working on their night modes, so this is like a big trend and uh, for a good reason because I am very impressed what you can do with this phone when you're just walking through the streets at night or when you're in a bar or in a dark place. Um, typically, if you try to take photos like this, um, you would probably need to bring a tripod and you have to put my like DSLR, for example, I would have to put it down, I would have to put it on the tripod and then shoot a 10 second exposure and you do these photos with the Huawei just out of your hand and it's really amazing. Suddenly walking through a street at night really changes your like, way of looking at things because it enables you, this phone enables you to do scans of your environment which like this phone is basically uh, better than my professional cameras at taking quick snapshots, sna snapshots at night and that's because there's a lot of a lot of artificial intelligence thinking about whatever you're doing. Um, I think that this phone is uh, a little bit less ex exaggerated in the night shot environment than, than the Google phone, for example, which, which made, uh, which, for my perception, destroyed the mood a little bit of the scene you're taking a photo of. The Huawei does a little bit better job here. And nonetheless, you get a lot of, a lot of funky environments. Like, for example, maybe you recognize here there's this spongy area which has neither a focus nor like a a real color to it, it's just like a, a, wish, a washed out noise. But then on the other hand, you get like green leaves at night. It's, it's pretty amazing. Like, uh, I'm, I'm blown away actually. This is, uh, this is something that's really fun to play with. Um, I wanted to show you this shot here though. This is the night shot. And in comparison, this is a regular JPEG. So the regular JPEG shot at 1250 ISO still is pretty good. And here it is with all the shadows pushed. Uh, let's look at this area here, for example, uh, in comparison to the night shot. So the, the night shot has a lot of noise and there's a lot of calculation happening inside the phone to make, make the noise less apparent. It's probably blurred out a little bit. In the JPEG, the, at least the, this area, which is only shadow, has a very neutral color tone to it, which is a little bit nicer, but, but well. 
uh, depending on what you want to use these images for, the, the night mode is really fun to play with and definitely great files to, to send to your friends or like to, to do quick snapshot, snapshots outside on the street with your friends. There's a, a decent amount of detail to it, uh, but it stops looking like a real photograph. <laughs> it looks a little bit more like a painting to my eyes. So what else did you like? Um, actually, so we've tested two phones that also had wide-angle lenses as of right now, and, or even ultra-wide-angle, and as of right now those lenses were relying on a small f-stop to cover the whole depth of field instead of having active focus. Okay. The Huawei actually has a, an auto fo uh, has a focusing ultra oh, not ultra-wide, sorry, wide-angle lens. So um, the quality of the files is going to turn out a little bit better than on a phone that just relies on a small f-stop to cover the whole depth of field. So you can even like isolate with a wide angle lens, you can even isolate a, an object in the foreground from a slightly more blurry background and that's actually pretty neat. And the other thing that I really liked was that the phone, whenever it, if you were taking photos on a long lens, like in my case I was standing in the water, kite surfers coming, I'm taking photos and then I'm waiting for a minute, um, the phone falls asleep and when I wake it up it goes instantly back to the previously used mode which is very useful because you don't have to like go through your camera whenever the action is coming back at you. You're just ready. That's great. Oh, one big advantage to the Samsung, I want to say, is that the, it also has the round edges. So when I was holding the Samsung in my hand, my fingertips always interfered with yeah. whatever was I, remember that. I was trying to do. So sometimes it switched modes for me. The Huawei doesn't do this, so that's a, a big benefit of, for me at least. The great thing about this phone is the lenses. There's like a, a long lens inside which is really, really strong and it's lying inside the, inside the body of the phone sideways and then there's the mirror to, to reflect the light so it, uh, the, the phone remains uh, very flat but still has optical elements to a long lens which is great. And there is a wide angle lens which is always fun to play with. Um, yeah, I, uh, I, I want to say I, I'd rather have great lenses in my pocket in a phone than bad lenses. So this phone is a, definitely one of the one of the, the big flagships on the market these days, I think. Okay, but you do you did run into some, I would say some coloring issues, right? Yes, um, absolutely. So the interesting thing is the, the regular lens, the normal lens uses a... Uh, RYYB. RYYB sensor, so um, it doesn't have a green... Um, like it doesn't receive the color green anymore, it receives twice yellow. And which is great because you get 40% more light into your sensor basically. On the other hand, uh, Huawei leaves you behind with a problem. Like when you're shooting RAW files, they come in also very green. And now you can choose between buying yourself a color card, uh, which is about 80 to $130, and putting it into all of your RAW file frames <laughs> just to get like color calibration. Or you have to uh, use one of those to create a profile that you can then basically paste on all your incoming RAW files. But that's where things become very techy. Um, seems like Huawei left us alone with not really, not really giving us an easy solution to fix the colors. They're coming in very, very green actually. A red flower suddenly as a RAW file looks orange and not red or like a, an orange car looks, what was it, like yellow instead of orange. Yeah. It's, Kind of funky, um, but it's obviously not what you want. On the other hand, the JPEG files come in pretty color accurate. Yeah, I think it's something that um, you know, if either you know whatever profiles that Huawei is using to calculate on the JPEG, they should provide that at least so the, in, in Adobe or something yes. like that, that you can actually use yeah. to edit, because that would be an easier process it would be, for yes. um, for people using raw files. Yeah. All right, cool. So it, it sounds like you really enjoyed this uh, this camera. Yeah, I did actually. Yeah. It was it was fun to play with. And yeah, it's a great little tool to have in your pocket. Okay. okay. All right. So 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 far this year, um, I know we've only done two. Yeah. Um, but is this is this more to your liking so far? Yeah, yeah of course, yeah. Uh, especially like having a, a serious long lens in your pocket, of course. It's always like uh, the best camera is always the one that you have on you and I sometimes struggle with bringing a DSLR to the beach, for example, so therefore I can take some cool snapshots with, uh, with a cell phone. Like right. It's a good replacement for me. Cool. Yeah. All right, guys, there you have it. You've heard it from Marian. Uh, he likes the P30 Pro. There's some issues yeah. that he would like to see sorted out. Yeah. Hopefully, while we can sort it out with the next, the Mate 30 Pro coming out later this year, we'll see what happens with that. 
but if you want to check out and follow Marion Sell, I have links for his social media. Uh, he's an excellent photographer. I mean, he does fantastic stuff. Uh, so definitely check it out and follow him on Instagram. I'll have a link for his Instagram channel there as well. Uh, otherwise, thank you very much. Um, I appreciate you guys watching. Again, sorry this was late. You know, things happen. But uh, till next time, hopefully you enjoy this and uh, thank you. See you next time.